In the previous two sections, we talked about the linear SVM. Now we are going to extend the idea into the nonlinear SVM. That means we are going to use the kernel concept to turn the linear SVM into a nonlinear SVM. Okay, and now previously we talked about the linearly separable case. So we have two cases, dot and triangle. We can just simply draw a straight line and then this straight line that is WTX plus W naught and equal zero, the hyperplane. We can separate these two cases um hundred percent correct. Yeah. Now this is the nonlinearly separable case. It means that after we are going to turn it into a hyperdimensional space, we are able to separate that. And now Right here, we cannot just simply draw a straight line which can separate these two cases. Yeah, so this is non separable case. But when we consider that there's a mapping function, find and then so say we are going to substitute, we are going to send this point into this function which will map to one of the points right here. So after we map this data set into through this mapping if it becomes something like that in hyperdimensional space and that we can just simply apply the linearly apply the linear SVM theory to design a hyperplane in this hyperdimensional space yeah so this is the concept about the nonlinear SVM so to give a little bit more concept that is we are going to use the feature mappings Z i equals find x i for example right here this is x1 this is x2 it's corresponding to each point this is a this is a bow x and then we have x1 and x2 now this is z1 z2 and then z that is find x again this one is a vector, so it is z1, z2, and then this x is x1, x2, right here, and then z1, z2, that is right here. So that means substitute every single coordinate into this function, it will give you a point right here. Now, Instead of designing the support machine in x1, x2 space, we are going to design the support machine in z1, z2 space. So this is a linearly separable case. Yeah. So if we are able to find a find which can turn this samples into a linearly separable case. So assume that we have this mapping. If we are able to turn it into a better look data set and then so now we are going to design the support machine now, this is the linear linear SVM we talked about before W that is given by this equation this expression contributed by only those X they are the support writers yeah so lambda I times the label times X and then we come up with X we still have we still need to find W naught. Yeah. But now instead of designing the supporter machine in X space, now we are going to design the supporter machine in Z space. So that means we use the data set right here. Yeah. Transform the original data set into a new data set in Z space. And then now everything applies. So instead of using x i just use z okay so this is w now this one i just call w z plus w naught yeah and now z is given by this mapping function now if we would like to map it back to x so what i'm going to do is just to replace z by find x i so now w now, this is w when you substitute when you substitute z equals find x i which will give you this bit that is the w in 
x space. Now, the w in x space that is nonlinear because we have this fine function, and now we have this set and then put it as find x. So we have this find x right here. So in x space, the linear function, the linear support machine in z space, in x space, it becomes nonlinear. Yeah. And now we have find times find. So this is the w. And when we talk about the hard classifier, we can just simply put the side function on the whole term right here if we are going to construct soft classifier we put the x function in the whole term right here yeah okay so this is um this is just the trick is that we are going to map x into z and then we decide the hyperplane in z space and then we paste all the z value by the find function we come up with these two design yeah okay and now when you look at this bit, why I always mention about the kernel, and then so this is a mapping function. If we are going to multiply find xi times find x, xi right here, it represents the support vector. x right here, it represents any samples in the working space. Yeah. So when we talk about these two terms, multiply them together we call this is the kernel function yeah we call this is the kernel function it satisfies the Mercer's theorem so we write the hard classifier and soft classifier using the kernel function nothing new we just we paste find times find using k in that case we represent the classifier using the kernel functions and in the literature these are the kernel function we can use. Yeah, they are commonly used kernel function. I just want to point out that according to the Mercer's theorem, if a linear combination of the kernels satisfy, each kernel satisfy the Mercer's theorem and then multiply them together, the weighted sum of them, or we call this is the linear combination of this kernel, and then the outcome is also a kernel satisfying the Mercer's theorem. So our k that is a connect that is a constant we are going to choose. Yeah. So the per product of the above k the kernel function is also a new kernel function. Now why we need to use the kernel function this example just show you why. We can just simply consider this kernel function and th so this z times x that means this z in order not to confuse with this xi i just simply use z right here so this one that is actually in the previous figure that is xi so this is the support vectors right here and then you will just find out that uh, if we consider this case z that is z1, z2, and then x, that is x1, x2, multiply them and then do the square, which give you something like that. If we are going to represent that in this form, you will find out that this is the mapping function, fine. So the mapping function, fine. So we have, we are going to map, you know, we are going to map x, into a three dimensional space yeah so we have x1 square root 2 times x1 times x2 as well as x2 so that means we are going to map x in a two dimensional space into a hyper dimensional space with three dimensions yeah so this is something very similar to what we have discussed in the neural network in the neural network we talk about that using the activation function we are able to map the lower dimensional vectors features into a high dimensional feature space so that in the high dimensional feature space we are able to come up with a linearly separable data set so that the final layer which is a linear discriminant function or a simple um, classifier which can separate the two classes or multi-classes so this is 
what I just mentioned about using the mapping function to map the lower feature space into higher feature space so that in the higher feature space which is linear separable another advantage using um using find that is using the kernel function that is right here we there are two steps to do the computation yeah but when you use the kernel function that is only one step another reason is that in some cases the find function that is very complicated which is going to map the lower feature space into infinite into higher infinite feature space yeah so that means we are not able to just simply uh, separate to find function explicitly okay now this is w with the kernel function w that is lambda i y i times the kernel function this x i that is only the support vectors plus w naught graphically we can just simply draw it like this this is w naught coming from here and then this is the k k from x1 x2 up to the number of support vectors so that means these k values only contribute by the support vectors as what we have learned before the connection rate right here that is lambda 1 y1 times k that is we construct yeah this one times this one we construct this term at this point collect all this lambda y k term plus w and then this is the yeah so this is the um um this is the output we have yeah this is the output of the classifier so x1 x2 up to xl that is a that is a component of this x so in this layer we do not have connection weight right here so it just indicate that all x element goes into this x and then so and then using this information to multiply with lambda 1 y1 and then sum up of all this information right here and then it generate the output to perform the classification so what i want to say is that supporter which can be represented graphically in the network form when you look at this network it is just a multiple input three layer single output neural network yeah okay so this is just an example to show that the hyperplane that is nonlinear so this is x1 this is x2 they are the input feature space and then so when we use the kernel function instead of a linear linear hyperplane and then we come up with a nonlinear one right here okay so just a few observation if we are going to use the radial basis function kernel fun uh, radial basis function kernel function and then the svm structure is the same as the rbf network structure we learned before yeah so that means when you substitute when you k use the rbf this new network become an rbf new network when sigmoid function is used as the kernel the SVM structure is the same as the three layer fully connected feed forward neural network structure but with single output so up to now we still do not have the rule of thumbs to determine the best kernel function as well as the parameter C that means we still need to use the try and error to determine these two values so these are the applications so we can use the SVM to do speaker verification, face detection, handwriting, recognition, so and so. You can just look at the literature and then you can find out a lot of applications.